Hello and welcome dear friends. Today I would like to discuss DNA repair mechanisms. Till now we have been seeing about mutations. Mutations, the process which creates a damage in the DNA. A DNA which cannot replicate further because wherever there is a damage the DNA polymerase enzyme cannot move further. Ultimately introducing a halt in the process of replication. Process of replication which is the fundamental process of life. Each and everything is governed in life through metabolism and all metabolic reactions they require enzymes. All the enzymes they are protein in nature and protein they are synthesized from DNA by transcription and translation. So if there is a stoppage of DNA replication due to some mutation then the whole life process will stop. But it is not as simple as that. The cell has its own methods of repair. Apart from the repair which we know during DNA replication of the editing function, it is a evolutionary method, needs no induction. Whenever there is a wrongly incorporated base, detecting the methylation based upon the methylated basis, DNA polymerase can itself remove the wrongly incorporated basis. This is one original natural type of repair mechanism simultaneously going on. But 10,000 base pairs in a human body daily they are uh, released and new cells have to be new nucleotides have to be formed during the process of DNA replication 1000 base pairs every 1000 base pairs one wrongly incorporated base is there it has to be recognized and removed off during the life process of any cell there is a chance that this may remain as it is that is spontaneous mutation there is a chance that there can be an external environmental impact like mutagenic agents which will damage the DNA. So the cell has its own repair mechanisms apart from the DNA replicative editing function of the DNA polymerase 3 there are certain repair mechanisms but this was not known until 1950 when all the biologists they thought that the genes were very stable units in a cell. The idea or the notion that DNA can be damaged and then simultaneously repaired came by accidental observations by the researchers who were exposing microbial cells to ultraviolet light or chemical mutagenic agents or physical mutagenic agents and their studies were going on. In one such study when they were exposed to ionizing radiations and kept in the window, in the window visible light fell on it and uh, suddenly muta mutagens they sorry mu mutants they popped out means the organisms which were mutated for that purpose they didn't show that character for example if i am mutating to kill it they didn't got killed they survived when it was kept in light so uh, cultures that were seemingly killed by exposure to ultraviolet light were recovered miraculously as if some magic has given life to them and these mutants uh, were popping out in the presence of light investigations of such organisms uh, from that time till today they have uncovered an array of enzymes many enzymes which can repair the damage damaged DNA DNA which is damaged due to environmental conditions environmental mutagens or during the errors of replication without these enzymes the DNA damage uh, if, if you measure would, would cause intolerable levels of mutation and ultimately cell death but the thing is that all the cells they have repair mechanisms diseases which are caused by defective repair enzymes they usually shorten the lifespan of a cell now this shows that how important the dna repair is uh, you can say very central to the core of life for survival of a cell but having said this i would also like to say that occasional failure of the repair system does occur just like the failure of DNA polymerase repair system results into repair mechanism induction. Occasionally repair mechanism also fails and this failure is very important in survival. Why? Because due to the failure of DNA replicative mechanisms and the failure of repair mechanism, these abnormalities they exist as mutation though their rate is very 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 low they exist as mutation and without mutation as i always say mutations they are the raw materials of evolution without mutation evolution wouldn't take place so this is the beauty of dna repair even if it fails or if it succeeds mostly it succeeds 
So having said this, I would like to throw some light on the history of DNA repair mechanism, how scientists they discovered. There is one beautiful experiment of what I just said, exposing a cell culture to ultraviolet light, then having certain hypothesis, ideas of their own. Today we know the things, at that time people didn't know the things. So they had their own odd and uh, what you can say, airy hypothesis, funny hypothesis. And we will see how those hypotheses were checked and disapproved and today we get the knowledge on the basis of the information and the conclusion which they derived. So come let's see in a small animated mode the history and the mechanism of DNA repair. There are three types of, three to four types of repair mechanism. First is light induced as the experiment goes on. Then secondly they also accidentally discovered that light is not the only way of repair. There are certain organisms which do not depend upon light but they have their excision type of repair. Whatever the damaged DNA is there, it is cut off, thrown away and a new uh, nucleotide length is added and it is repaired. So these are beautiful mechanisms. Come let's see in animation uh, the DNA repair mechanisms. So come let's see some of the history associated with discovery of uh, repair mechanisms in DNA. Albert Kellner was one scientist who in 1950s was working with this concept and he was very near to a conclusion but by some sloppy methods he was unable to conclude that there is a repair mechanism which is induced by light. <clears throat> he was doing an experiment in which cultures were exposed to ultraviolet radiation and then he used to accidentally keep the cultures in the window. In the window light was exposed to those cells, visible light, when I say just light I mean visible light and this light repaired the mutants, means whatever the mutants he intended to use for, they did not show mutant characters but they were somehow repaired. Now he had a very premature conclusion that light has to do something with that but he was unable to uh, conclude properly. These observations were done by the scientist here Stan Rupert on your screen. And he along with his colleague Solomon Godgal, who were working in John Hopkins University, uh, very interestingly uh, Stan Rupert was a physicist but he was tired of uh, doing physics and he suddenly got interest in molecular biology. See the people of that era of those times and see their quest for knowledge. It uh, crossed the boundaries of uh, physics, chemistry, biology, whatever it may be. They were great philosophers. Uh, were not bound to one per particular stream or branch. So he started working in molecular biology and what he carried out was Kleiner's idea and what they did was they took two cultures and uh, the same which Albert Kellner did and he showed that bacterial culture could mysteriously recover from a death by ultraviolet radiation if exposed to visible light. So Kellner found that the cells only recovered when they were exposed to visible light. So if you see here if this is kept in one of the culture was kept in dark and the other culture was exposed to ultraviolet uh, sorry visible light and then kept for incubation one day and later on the cultures were that is one from the dark culture other from the light culture. We will call this as the dark incubated culture this as the light incubated culture. So the cultures were taken and plated on simple plates. So what was expected in the plates placing the culture samples from the light and the dark treatments on culture plates showed that only the cells which were exposed to light could grow. This is one set of experiment. Now this is Kleiner's work that you expose a culture to ultraviolet light and if after that you don't expose it to light but keep it in dark the cells will die. Okay, or you can say very few cells, so two to three cells they are remaining, spontaneous mutants they may be as we know right for now, but most of the cells they are killed. Okay, now this is one observation. What was a very premature conclusion or a hypothesis from that? This is very funny, but still what they thought that they were physicists, they were chemists and you know that light has the capacity to induce uh, light oxidation, maybe like that. So they thought that the cultures which were kept in the dark, they never thought about DNA repair 
what they thought was cell is secreting some molecules let us call it as cellular poisons they called it as cellular poisons and the light it destroyed the cellular poison from, from where this cellular poison came that came by the uv radiation when the cells were exposed to uv light they created cell poison and that cell poison was destroyed in the presence of light and the cell survived godgal and stan thought that the cells recovered because light helped repair the damaged dna by uv these were the two scientists only godgal and stan they thought something different all were thinking about the cell poisons these two people thought that the cells recovered because light it helped repair the damaged dna and nothing else there was something in the light they couldn't discover finally what it was it took 27 years later on i will come to that but they thought that the cells have been recovered because of the uh, repair in the dna <laughs> now they have this hypothesis that they they say that it is not the cell poison or it is not some extracellular secretion which is which is killing it is quite natural uv light induced some toxin and toxin is killing no they said there is something in the dna which is happening so what was at that time in 1945 something 40s frederick griffith transfer ex, uh, transformation experiment was very popular and to test something for the dna they had this transformation experiment in their hand so they tested their idea of dna repair by light by measuring the transformation of hemophilus influenzae why hemophilus influenzae again griffiths same tool which he used bacteria for transformation they used hemophilus influenzae because it was a effective transformant it can undergo transformation very effectively so in those times so transformation occurred when a bacterium it uptakes the dna grabs the dna brings or passes it through the cell wall and integrates it inside its own genome like this so the cell here you can just saw on the right that has been transformed with a piece of dna containing let us imagine this is a gene for antibiotic resistance and in this example they took streptomycin as a antibiotic so the transformed cell will now express the new gene and they will survive when exposed to antibiotic this as it is not transformed will not okay so using this gene for antibiotic resistance they can determine now which cells have been transformed by the growing cells and which cells have not okay they simply played this on both the cells on a media containing streptomycin what happens after incubation one is not having the gene the other is having the gene now this is experiment just to check whether transformation is perfect or not later on we will see the effect of dna uh, exposed to ultraviolet and effect of dna exposed to visible light so this is just confirming the transformation experiment transformed cells will be resistant to streptomycin here and uh, the untransformed cells are killed killed by the streptomycin because there is no resistance so this is one experiment and they had their cultures ready with them so use they use this system to show that ultraviolet damaged dna that ultraviolet light damaged dna nothing else they use the transformation experiment to show uv light is mainly responsible for damaging the dna they isolated the dna from <coughs> streptomycin resistant strain of hemophilus influenza bacteria just now in the previous case those dna they isolated not the cells only the dna they took because naked dna is responsible for transformation they took this dna and they irradiated one sample and they used the second sample as control only one of the culture was exposed to uv light one of the culture was exposed to uv light the other was kept as control as simple as that so one of the tube which was containing the dna and in that ultraviolet light was exposed to naked dna that was added into the hemophilus influenzae containing cells try to understand that was added in a culture broth in which hemophilus influenzae were there ready to uptake the bacteria one tube was naked dna was irradiated in one it was not irradiated cells are 
clean they are wild type so what happens when these culture were taken pipetted out and plated on plates containing antibiotics now these are to be plated on plates containing antibiotics the the result which was there means on one which contained streptomycin but not exposed and here in which the plates were exposed to uv that is the dna was exposed to uv that plate did not show any growth so after putting the dna into cultures of hemophilus cells mixing it and plating it on a plate for streptomycin you see transformants arised in control but not on those plates which were where the dna was exposed to the ultraviolet light now here at this point take a small pause and think cells from the control received working streptomycin gene and they formed many controls many colonies here on the control but only few or no cells grew on the uv exposed dna they thought that uv has damaged the streptomycin resistant gene as we know today that is the truth that ultraviolet light had affected the dna but now that funny incidents go back about the cellular poisons being excreted there could have been a doubt that the ultraviolet light did not affect the dna but the solvent instead solvent was damaged that is one probability which had to be seen there are two probabilities which they checked again one foolish probability it may sound like but at that time you go in 1950 there were always there are always people objecting to what you do there always will be multiple perspectives brought in so one perspective was what if the solvent is getting damaged and dna is having no effect if the absorption is by the solvent so the lack of growth in the culture could have been caused by something in the solvent which is being altered the was a hypothesis a null hypothesis hypothesis can go either way so that is a null hypothesis and to check that hypothesis they uh, irradiated the solvent only only the solvent in which dna is taken they used one test tube only solvent was exposed with the ultraviolet light in the second unexposed dna was kept now this cultures were then mixed now this needs dna in this dna is added after the uh, uv irradiated solvent is prepared means after the solvent is irradiated normal dna is added now see if solvent was to do something not the dna as was the hypothesis then here also there should not have been a transformation in this tube also there should not have been a transformation and here naturally it's a control it will so see let's uh, curiously what was the observation they took the cultures plated it on to plates containing streptomycin and interestingly in both the plates you get colonies it has to be there why it wasn't possible because normal dna put into uv irradiated solution has nothing loss in transforming activity only the solvent was irradiated here so this again proves that the effect of radiation is on dna not on the solvent this is a control no issues about this okay so now this has to be tested the second possibility was that uv irradiated dna did not integrate with the hemophilus gene like the unexposed dna now the second part of the hypothesis null hypothesis that is also actually uh, one way of thinking that the possibility is that uv irradiated dna may be there now put dna in the solution and then expose it to uv uv irradiated solution it did not integrate into the hemophilus genome okay as this easily integrates maybe the dna which is there it is not getting integrated so they added it into transformants of hemophilus influenzae and the probability that this may not pass the cell wall transformation did not occur the possibility which was there that has to be tested now this hypothesis could be seen if you plate it on streptomycin containing plate this would have given the same results as before means the about the plates but for a different reason than their hypothesis instead of 
डाइंग ड्यू टू डी एन ए डैमेज सेल्स वुड हैव डाइड बिकॉज दे नेवर रिसीव द स्टेप्टोमाइसिंग जीन ओके इन द केस देर वुड डॉन्ट हैव बीन एनी ग्रोथ दैट वुड हैव बीन वन ऑफ द प्रोबेबिलिटी ओके मे बी हियर यू सी यू वी डैमेज देर इज नो ग्रोथ हियर इंस्टेड ऑफ डाइंग ड्यू टू डी एन ए डैमेज द सेल्स वुड हैव डाइड बिकॉज दे नेवर रिसीव द स्टेप्टोमाइसिन रेजिस्टेंट जीन दिस वॉज देर सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ द हाइपोथिस इन कंट्रोल यू ऑलवेज हैव ग्रोथ सो नाउ द पार्ट ऑफ proving the hypothesis comes they showed that the uv irradiated dna is just likely to integrate in the hemophilus genome just like as the normal dna that this this what is is a hypothesis okay the re, this would have given us this is not the result which is there this is the hypothetical result which should have been occurred because because i am going back again see because the dna was not integrated here one of the hypothesis is that you see here dna which is exposed to ultraviolet light may not undergo transformation second hypothesis first hypothesis what was with respect to solvent getting damaged now the second hypothesis is that the uv getting damaged not the solvent and if the uv is damaged it will not go inside and and hypothetically speaking when this such cells are plated on this is again a hypothetical in the animation hypothesis when plated on plates containing streptomycin you should get a result like what according to hypothesis okay this is not the actual result which they got according to hypothesis they should have got growth in control and no growth on the streptomycin containing plate going on the basis that ultraviolet light damaged the dna but see what the results were results were not like this which you are seeing on the screen results were they showed that even after exposing the dna to ultraviolet light there was uptake it integrated into hemophilus genome because when they took the culture and plated it this uv irradiated culture and the control if you see here uv irradiated dna which may have gone undergone some change and unexposed dna uv irradiated dna on the plates they showed that the uv damaged dna and the streptomycin resistant gene second hypothesis which they thought would not come was actually the proof they were left with the conclusion that uv did damage the dna and the streptomycin resistant gene but they did not know how this happened they did not know how this happened now in this second hypothesis which they found they devised a experiment to check the second theory that there was no growth actually as they were expecting that people are telling there will be no growth but we will get growth but surprisingly they did not get growth so they were forced to conclude that yes this uv is damaging the dna but how what is the mechanism behind that they designed a the experiment to test their theory they uh, the cleaner's the theory that light is helping them the repair they mixed uv damaged dna with the extract from e coli cells and exposed one tube to light and one tube to dark what are these two tubes which you are seeing now this is a totally new experiment which they did depending upon the confusing result in the second hypothesis where they did not get the growth they thought that the even if the dna is damaged there will be transformation there was no transformation so they devised an experiment to test the theory that light is helping to repair the damaged dna they mixed the uv damaged dna with extract from e coli cells and exposed one tube to light and one tube they kept in dark then you can see e coli extracts they added this dna in e coli extract kept one in dark and one in light interestingly cleaner's work was all about this only and here uh, stan and at all they hypothesized that light can activate an enzyme in e coli this was their first hypothesis they did not discover the enzyme they just put a hypothesis that light is activating an enzyme in e coli and the activated enzyme is repairing the dna so they had this hypothesis here this green molecule is something is happening in a light exposed dna which is repairing the damaged dna 
So, when these were plated, naturally, after several minutes, they removed the hemophilus DNA from the E. coli extract, added it to a culture of streptomycin sensitive hemophilus enzyme. They added this culture, this DNA to streptomycin sensitive hemophilus cells. Means those cells which were, these both cells, these are streptomycin sensitive. Now, if you are adding DNA from such light and dark exposed culture, you can expect some results and uh, they found that when these cultures were allowed to grow and then some amount of this culture is taken out and plated on to streptomycin containing plates. This is the marker which is uh, there to test whether the gene has acquired inside or not. So interestingly if there was a repair from light here there should have been colonies and here there should not have been any colonies because it was kept in dark. Okay, so if repaired, the DNA should transform these cells into streptomycin resistant cells. Even if the repair is in dark, there should be colonies. Even if the repair is in light, there should be colonies on these plates. So they found transformation cells were there in the light cultures only, light exposed cultures only. And that light activated enzyme in E. coli, this fixes the DNA damage. There was no repair in the dark cultures. So this was a very interesting observation and they found the first known DNA repair system. They proved that light is responsible for repair. Unfortunately for them, the enzyme responsible for repair was present in so low quantities and due to lack of instrumentation, lack of what you can say, the advancements in the instrumentation area of science, they were unable to isolate and purify those enzyme so for 27 long years it remained that photolyze enzyme remained unidentified later on uh, 27 years later on today we know that these enzymes which are repairing the dna they are photolyze enzymes these are the enzymes which are now called as photolyze induced by photo photons that is light these they termed it as the thymine dimer doctors Additional research today shows that this enzyme photolyase repairs a specific type of uh, DNA damage which we have seen called as thymine thymine dimers. These dimers are damaging because they stop the DNA replication. These dimers are totally excised off by various mechanisms. Again lateron means dimers which are two uh, present on the DNA that is two adjacent dimers and the cyclobutyl ring formation which is there. Okay, light causes the dimer to form and here you can see there is a cyclobutyl ring formation and this cyclobutyl ring is removed by breaking the thymine thymine bond. Now this is photolyase light induced repair. Photolyase attaches to the dimer and breaks the thymine thymine bond with the energy from the light. This is one type of repair. Over the years it has been found out that not all organisms they have the capacity of harboring photolyase to fix the dimers. Two scientists, Richard Setlau, Richard Setlau and Bill Carrier, Bill Carrier, they discovered another system called as the excision repair. The excision repair system removes the dimer by removing the complete segment of the strand. The size of the segment will depend upon the type of the organism. Different organisms have different capacities of excision. So, you can see here, these are the enzymes which cut the length of the DNA, remove it, DNA polymerase will fill the gap, ligase will seal the gap and the repair mechanism takes place. So, after the segment is removed, these activities are happening. DNA replication, we all know it induces the errors in DNA. These errors are basically uh, not allowed to happen or immediately repaired by the DNA polymerases editing function or the proofreading capabilities. Uh, so whenever a wrong base is incorporated, DNA polymerase stops and removes the base and continues replication. But we, we know that this system is not foolproof. Thousands of bases being added, 1000 base pairs per second and one wrongly incorporated base occasionally remains. DNA replication can introduce errors. These errors are usually caught by the proofreading capability. But if it is not repaired by proofreading capability, then several other types of repair systems they exist. These repairs, they there are two to three or four types I can say. One is 
light induced photolyase enzyme mechanism that is called as the light induced repair system second is the excision repair there are three types of excision repair nucleotide excision repair base excision repair and mismatch excision repair in our next lectures we will be seeing detail about each of these excision repairs so till that time we can understand that if a dna replication proof reading fails there is a repair system existing in the cells but again above that i would like to say that these repair systems are still not 100 percent perfect there are errors in the repair system also which slip past the uh, whole process of repair and some damage remains dna repair may be an integral part of the well-being of the organism for that generation but in subsequent generation a rare i am saying this is a very rare phenomenon when a repair also fails then that mutation remains and that is called as evolution a mutation giving rise to evolution as i have been always saying mutations are the raw materials for evolution so this is how the repair system in bacteria and the multicellular organisms they function we will be seeing more detail about these repair systems one by one in my next lecture till that time try to understand go through this once again and if you have any difficulties you can mail me or you can personally contact me in my department and we can have a very good discussion about the consequences of this repair till that time goodbye see you once again